Now, we can't all be Bradley Wiggins, and we certainly can't all enjoy his sideburns. But we can get fitter, healthier, save money, and uh, guess what? Even enjoy getting to work by taking to two wheels. And here's the headline. You don't even have to squeeze into Lycra to do it. Let's just say, for the sake of argument, I've got a meeting to go to and a job to attend to. Well, today, I've chosen a pair of commuter's jeans. Most of the big brands are doing these. They're stretchy and tough in all the right places. They've even got a bit of reflective material in the turn-up, which is practical with just a hint of the midlife crisis about it. So these are the big blue super highways. There's a few of them in London now. And although they're not everywhere and they're not perfect, they do make the riders that much more visible on the road, and I think drivers have to take notice of us. What have you got in your boxes, mate? Oh. Sandwiches. Oh, I've got boxes. You're right, fella. And so to the thorny issue of where do you leave your bike and how safe is it going to be? A lock like this isn't a bad idea. Try and look for the sold secure gold standard and then you know it's half decent. And in fact, the smaller, sometimes the better, as these kind of locks are harder for thieves to crowbar open. Job done. If you've got quick release wheels, you might have got into the habit of taking the wheels off and locking them to the frame. If you've got one of these clever little gizmos though, you won't need to do that. They come with a unique key that only you have access to, only you then, can get at your wheels. There's no getting away from it. London leads the way in the UK cycling revolution. Cycling as a means of transport and as an aspirational lifestyle choice has boomed. Dedicated cycle superhighways and city bike hire schemes have popped up in the last couple of years. Hopefully some of these positives will filter out to other cities. Have you noticed a massive increase? I mean, we're talking about London now, but, but nationwide, I mean, what's the picture? Most of the growth in cycling is taking place in, uh, in London. It's growing at about 10, 15% a year. Cambridge has a great cycling culture, a lot of students there, a lot of young people. But there are other cities where it's not growing. And I think local authorities and the national government, they need to do more to encourage it. A lot of people are very off-put by the number of lorries and cars blocking the roads and the sort of awareness from drivers, and it scares them, frankly. What are the things that they need to overcome and, and the practices they need to develop to, to be safe on the roads? First of all is get some good advice. Talk to either a knowledgeable friend, um, help with some route planning, get some cycle training. And cycle training, certainly in London, is available free or subsidised um, from most local councils. But until we get you know, high-quality bike lanes and segregated bike tracks like we have in, say, the Netherlands or Copenhagen in Denmark, you are going to have to share that space. And in the meantime, what do you do when someone rolls down their window and says, Oi, mate, I pay road tax, you don't? Well, I mean, road tax hasn't existed since 1937. Cyclists have every right to be on the road. In fact, we actually save taxpayers money. Do you need insurance? When you talk about insurance, most people think of uh, theft insurance because theft is a big problem. But probably more importantly is third-party insurance. Um, if you're riding uh, through a city and if you take a wing mirror off of a Mercedes, for example, there's a good chance you're going to be liable for a, a good chunk of money. National organisations offering third-party liability insurance with membership are the CTC and British Cycling. They can also point members to specific insurance for their bikes, although some household insurance policies will also provide cover for your steed. And talking of steeds, there are government initiatives to encourage us to get on our bikes. The Cycle to Work scheme, for example, typically gives employees of participating firms about £1,000 to spend on new bikes and gear, which they then repay in a salary sacrifice. That means a tiny, itsy-bitsy little bit of money every month. You wouldn't even notice it, honest. So despite the fact that there's obviously plenty of room for improvement still, it's probably safe to say that cyclists have never had it so good. How far have you come? What's your commute? Uh, from Isha. Isha? 25 oh, that's miles. A, that's a fair distance there, isn't it? Yeah, it's about 25 miles. How Twic far have you gone? Twickenham to Westminster. Every day? Yeah. Come rain or shine? Yeah. What's your best tip? Wear comfortable clothing. I always think getting ahead of the traffic is quite important so they see you. I always wear a lot of yellow. Oh, stay clear of lorries. lorries? Stay behind them, never pass them inside. Wear the proper clothes and obviously wear a helmet. Is it a race? It's, no, it's just getting to work safely, but uh, I guess challenging people along the way is part of it. And it's not a race, is it? No, Except although it is in here. It is a bit, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> now, some of us thrive off this. Peace.
but for others, the commute to work can be an excuse to de-stress before the day is even started and explore hidden gems around the city. But for now, a touch of breakfast. Once upon a time, cycling cafes would have been unheard of. Now they're popping up all over the place like mushrooms. I'm always looking for more chilled out routes to get to where I'm going, and there are plenty of websites and apps that can help you escape the busiest routes. So that's me fired up and ready to go. Now I like to see the city from a different perspective, so I'm going to be doing a good chunk of my commute along the Regent's Canal, which runs from east to west London. Now Regent's Canal dates back to the Industrial Revolution. It's now pretty much a utopia for all cyclists and pedestrians, and nature as well. And it's a great way to take in the city, provided that you're not in a rush. Now, as you can see, cyclists share the space with a lot of walkers and a lot of runners along this path. So rule number one, don't go bombing down the whole path. Rule number two, always ding your bell, especially when you're coming around corners and going under the bridges. For a map of the canal network and do's and don'ts of cycling along it, go to the Canal River Trust website. There are over 2,000 miles of canals in England and Wales. I've reached the end of my canal route and as you can see I'm back on the roads again. Now the cycle path that I've taken actually cuts through a lot of the scary traffic that cuts through King's Cross. This is where pre-planning has been a great help. So definitely have a look at one of the apps, plan out a quieter route and feel confident and safe on the roads. So now we're on Shaftesbury Avenue. It's quite cool thinking that I set off this morning on my commute from East London ridden along the canals and the towpaths and have now ended up in the centre of the city. And here I am at my final destination. This gym is a brand new concept allowing cyclists to come in, lock up their bikes and have a shower. Definitely time to freshen up. The whole club has been designed completely around the cyclist and the runner. So from the minute you come into the club, we are absolutely unique. So we have a 340 space bike park. We have um, dry cleaning through to getting you personal training. We have all the facilities and products that you would get in any cycle shop. So you can get anything from a punch to being repaired to having your bike built for you. So that's me all changed back into my normal clothing. Now it's time to go and find Ned. Well, two different rides, two different riders, and two probably very different experiences, Jules. I mean, mine was a bit hectic at times, but yours looked um, nice and relaxed. It was a very chilled ride uh, along the canal pass and tow pass, and there were loads of little hidden gems that I found along the way as well. Uh, the great thing is, is that I was using some of the brilliant apps and websites that are out there to give alternative routes so that you don't have to be in the hustle and bustle of the city. Absolutely. Well, beautiful weather for it. Whether or not all these people will still be riding in February remains to be seen, and for me and Jules, just a small matter of getting home now.